Michael Horst. I'm Chief Architect here at Comforte and welcome to part two of our whiteboard session about PCI compliance with BASE24. As you know, we discussed in the first part why it makes sense to protect BASE24. Um, we will now discuss um, how this actually can be achieved. In this session we will look at a typical BASE24 processing environment like this one to understand how the pans are actually flowing through the system and identify where they are stored. And I will then explain how our Secure Data 24 solution will help you render the pan unreadable anywhere where it is stores, stored as the PCI 3.4 mandate requests you. And not only that, I will also explain how you can actually reduce the PCI scope. So let's start by looking at this uh, sample processing environment. In fact, this diagram reflects an environment as it exists in one of our customer sites. So we have uh, Base24 POS, uh, the classic variant of the uh, Base24 system, installed on a pair of non-stop servers. The two servers are connected via an Oracle Golden Gate Active-Active uh, um, disaster recovery interface. Um, and the transactions generated by the POS terminals are routed by Base24 to the various interfaces like we have here Visa or MasterCard. And on the way through, of course, Base24 stores uh, transaction data in various files like the major transaction log files, the POS uh, transaction log file depicted here. Then we have log files for each of the interchange interfaces, like the IMF files here. Or we have store and forward files that come into play uh, if an interface is down or for reversals for the various interfaces. And we have a store and forward file here to a fraud detection system. Uh, that is connected to the non-stop servers. Um, as we see also here, um, we have several systems that are connected to the Base24 system and uh, uh, PAN data is actually exchanged uh, between those systems. We have, for example, um, the extract file that is generated by Base24 on a regular basis, which also contains PAN uh, data that is transferred actually to a Linux system and on this Linux system there is a reformatting process which takes the data and uh, reformats it to a second file which is then transferred via SFTP to a settlement system where the final uh, processing is performed. We have another connection to an ACI uh, um, system for fraud management um, that is uh, directly connected via the XPNet process and uh, data is stored in an Oracle database. We have another server that receives data via an Oracle Golden Gate replication. Uh, so PAN data from the PTLF uh, log file is actually um, replicated to this Oracle database. So um, apart from that we have even custom, customer specific enhancement here in this scenario we have the uh, customer specific file GCPF which also contains transaction data that needs to be protected. So what does it mean for this payment processor to render the PAN unreadable anywhere where it is stored as PCI demands? Well obviously we need to protect all the PANs stored in the Base24 standard and custom files. As we know, Base24 has no built-in protection and we also know that disk level volume encryption does not provide a compliant solution because the decryption of data is happening at the OS level. We have also the challenge that we need to protect the files, uh, the, the cardholder data that is um, stored on the satellite systems. In some cases we are lucky because uh, we have built-in protection already like this uh, fraud management system here using an Oracle database which is using the onboard encryption mechanisms of Oracle. But we have other um, systems in this uh, environment which provide, don't provide any protection yet. 
for example, this intermediate Linux server or the other Oracle database. So now let's explore how Secure Data 24 can help you achieve the PCI 3.4 compliance. So um, let's look at the Base24 system first. What Secure Data does is it actually introduces a protection layer between the Base24 system and the database. So in this protection layer, actually, we intercept every I.O. to the database files and we analyze the record that is to be written into the file and uh, locate the pans in that record and replace it with a non-sensitive surrogate, a randomly generated token. Take the PTLF for example. Let's look at the PTLF transaction record. And this transaction record typically has the pan at multiple locations in this record. So Secure Data actually analyzes the record structure, locates all the pans and replaces the pans with a token. And obviously when reading the data back from the database the process is reversed and the token is replaced by the pan to let Base24 read the original pan data. So now we protected the PTLF um, replacing the tokens with pans and have that file protected. And likewise with the same mechanisms we can protect the uh, int interchange log files and uh, also of course the subfiles. You have to note though the subfiles are quite complex in uh, the record structure. They actually contain an ISO um, message format. So Secure Data is able to analyze that ISO message format and locate the pans in, in that format. And uh, also um, we can cope with AppStick um, formatted uh, ISO messages with me which may also be stored in those files. And uh, we also are able to adapt to any custom file. Um, Secure Data actually has a very flexible configuration framework which allows you to do that without any programming effort. We still have one sensitive file set not covered yet, the extract files. So uh, while we could protect these with the same mechanisms as well, uh, Secure Data provides a much better solution for that. Uh, it's actually eliminating the uh, temporary storage on the non-stop just for subsequent transfer completely by making Base24 transferring the file directly to the remote system. So using that mechanism we can eliminate the extract file that is uh, stored on the non-stop completely and store it directly on the target server. And of course, Secure Data provides secure mechanisms for doing that transfer. So we don't use FTP, we use SSH protected transfer. But what about the files, the Base24 files on the backup nonstop server? Secure Data supports that as well. It works seamlessly with any disaster recovery uh, solution like Oracle Golden Gate in this case. So the records with the tokens are replicated to the second non-stop server and uh, on the second non-stop server you have an exact copy of uh, secure data running so you have that second system protected as well. Uh, please note that um, secure data uses a stateless tokenization engine. Uh, that means you have not to worry about any collisions or the performance of the overall solution. So now we have protected all the files on the non-stop server. But what about uh, the other systems? Um, can Secure Data provide anything here to protect uh, these systems as well? Yes, in fact, it can. So take for example this intermediate Linux server that does the reformatting of the extract file. 
So secure data can not only transfer the file directly to the Linux server, what it also can do, it can um, make sure that the file is stored in encrypted format um, on the Linux server. So we can protect this file immediately with PGP encryption. But not only that we can do um, that encryption directly on the target server, we can also pipe the data directly to the reformatting application. And in fact, if we can do even better, we can pipe it further directly to the target server, having it again encrypted with PGP. So effectively, what we have done with that mechanism, we have eliminated the intermediate storage of the extract data on that intermediate system completely, so we have effectively taken that system out of scope completely. So we can consider that protected as well. And of course we um, have that um, storage on the target settlement system uh, encrypted with PGP until the, uh, the data is finally processed, so we have the, uh, that system protected as well. Let's finally look at the last system that is not protected yet. The system with the Oracle database that receives transaction log data via the Oracle Golden Gate replication. Well, we could use onboard Oracle mechanisms to protect the PAM using encryption. That's a much better solution. Since the application actually does not need the original PAM data for processing, it simply needs a unique, a unique identifier, we can simply replicate the tokenized data to the Oracle database. And the beauty of this is that the system now does not store any PAN at all. And um, so in effect, we have actually taken this system out of PCI scope without any additional effort. Let's finally summarize the key takeaways of this session. So PCI 3.4 compliance can be achieved with Secure Data 24. Secure Data 24 provides a completely transparent solution for Base24. No code changes are required and even um, customer specific enhancement can be supported without any additional effort. Secure Data 24 also works seamlessly with any disaster recovery solution that you may have in place. Finally, Secure Data 24 can not only protect data on the non-stop server, it can help you cover um, sensitive data on other platforms as well. And even help you to take systems out of PCI scope completely. You're now probably interested in how this all works. So don't miss our final part of this whiteboard series where we really take a look under the hood of Secure Data 24. We also encourage you to go to our website comforted.com for more information. Please note that we also offer a proof of concept so you, you can see Secure Data in action in your own environment. So that's really the best way to understand what it can do for you.